What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm counting down the top 10 most underrated sneakers of 2018. I think it's safe to say that this year we've had a bunch of incredible sneaker releases and with so many great shoes dropping, a lot of the really good ones sometimes get left in the dust. And a lot of these great releases that aren't necessarily as hyped up as some of the bigger releases that kind of get forgotten are some of my favorite releases of the year. So I'm making this list to kind of honor those shoes that didn't get as much love as I think that they deserved. And honestly, if you missed out on any of these sneakers and want to grab them, you can pretty much grab any of them for retail right now. This video isn't sponsored by StockX, but StockX was the only place that I could really find a lot of these for retail or even below retail in some cases, so I left a link to StockX in the description below. But with all that being said, I think it's time to jump right into the list, so why don't we start things off with an honorable mention. And the shoe that fills that spot is the Adidas Yeezy 500. I was originally going to pick a specific colorway for this shoe, but because three out of the four colorways look almost identical, I figured I would just go with Yeezy 500. If you guys have seen any of my reviews of this shoe, you know that I'm not the biggest fan. And that's not because it's not a well-made shoe, and that's usually the reason why I don't like a sneaker. But for whatever reason, this shoe just like, it reminds me of a bug or like an insect, and that really creeps me out. I know that's not the case for everybody, and that's not the only reason why I don't like this shoe. There's a lot of reasons, like obviously the color schemes. I don't know why you need three different versions of a tan shoe. I mean, tan shoes in general can be kind of hard to pull off as it is, so why you need three versions. Not sure. But to be fair, I do think that it's a modern take on the dad shoe aesthetic and I do like that about it. The reason this shoe made the list is because out of all the Yeezys that have dropped this year, this shoe is by far the least popular. While I was coming up with this list, I actually asked you guys on Twitter and on Twitch what shoes you guys think should be included in the list so it wasn't just my own personal picks. And that's the reason this shoe is on the honorable mention spot. I wasn't originally going to include it because at the end of the day, most of them did sell out. But as a lot of you guys shrewdly pointed out, for a Yeezy that a lot of people seem to like, it's kind of the least popular out of the bunch. In New York City, you could pretty much walk into any Adidas Originals or Billionaire Boys Club and find a pair like a week after release. I picked up my size from Kith on the day of the release, I think like five or six hours after they opened because they didn't do a draw or anything like that, and pairs were still sitting. And a year ago, for a Yeezy, that would have been unheard of. Number 10, the Air Jordan 1 Shadows. This shoe is quite possibly one of my favorite releases of the entire year. And it's really unfortunate that this shoe is kind of left in the shadow, pun intended, of all the other great Jordan releases this year. Let's be honest, this year has been great for Jordan brand releases. We've got the Black Cement 3s, we've got the Concords coming out, we've got the Union LA Jordan 1s, we've got a bunch of off-white stuff. It's been a great year. And so I guess because of that, it is understandable that even though these guys were popular when they released, they've kind of been forgotten. The Shadow 1s are one of the more classic Air Jordan 1s, especially with this black and gray color blocking. They're very reminiscent of the Bread 1s and the Royal 1s, but there's still a lot of good to be said about this 2018 Shadow release. The quality of the materials is pretty solid. It's almost exactly the same as what you have on the Royal and the breads. The colorway is simple, clean, and minimal, and it's easy to rock with pretty much anything on any occasion. And at the end of the day, I mean, it's a Jordan 1. It's one of the most classic silhouettes. And when you look at this shoe, like, it's a good looking sneaker. Number nine, the Adidas P.O.D. The P.O.D. had one of the biggest launches that I've ever been a part of for any sneaker. Adidas really went in on this pair because I think they were banking on it becoming like the next NMD. When this shoe dropped, Adidas went on this crazy marketing spree. They got me a billboard in Soho, which is nuts. Check out that video if you haven't yet. They also flew me and a couple other shoe tubers over to London to actually check out the shoe for itself. And there was a private concert with Pharrell and the Migos. We got to design our own shoe. The entire experience was nuts. Seriously, check out that vlog. And not only that, but the pair that I'm holding right here is actually a sample pair that Adidas sent me directly from Germany. The whole experience was crazy and it's one of my favorite things that has ever happened to me because of YouTube. But unfortunately, even with that huge marketing push behind it, the POD never really caught on. It is genuinely a good sneaker. I think it looks really nice and really sleek. I actually think it's very comfortable as well, especially with this large boost cushion in the heel. To be honest, I wouldn't have minded if they made the upper prime knit, which I think would have been a little bit more comfortable, but I think it is supposed to be more of a budget model like the mesh NMDR one, so I can kind of understand why they didn't. The POD is genuinely a nice looking sneaker and I think if they had done some really good collabs on it or maybe limited certain colorways of it I think it really could have stood out but it's just a basic GR shoe it never really caught on to the same sort of hype that the NMDs had so for that reason it kind of just sits on shelves number eight the PSNY Air Force Ones I actually picked up a pair of these in Paris and then ended up selling them because I just was never gonna wear them and that's definitely nothing against the shoe I think it's a really great looking sneaker and the quality of the materials are actually pretty great I just have too many sneakers and if there's a shoe that I don't see myself wearing for a couple months it's got to go 
With the insane popularity of the PSNY Jordan collab, I was kind of surprised to see this shoe not being as hyped as that collab was. I think the release colorways of this shoe were clean, albeit a little boring. I wouldn't have been mad if they had tried out some nice colors, like I think a maroon PSNY Air Force One would be nuts. And even though these pairs pretty much sold out online, there were still pairs available at Nike Lab for like months afterwards. There were some things about the sneaker that I personally liked, but I think a lot of people sort of shied away from. The main thing was that the leather panels on the side were cut really, really high. And because the ankle area of the shoe was so high and honestly so floppy, it was really difficult to style with jeans. I think it was a great looking shoe on display, but on people's feet, it was definitely harder to wear. And the other thing that I think turned people off was that it seemed to have a lot of prototype-like details, which is very similar to what Off-White does. And so there was a lot of people saying that it seemed like it was knocking off Off-White, which people didn't seem to love. Overall though, I think it was a really well-constructed shoe that used great materials, and I also think it looks great. Number seven, the OVO Air Jordan 8s. This shoe is Drake's last collab with Jordan brand before he temporarily went off to Adidas. Now Drake's back, but he's back with Nike and not Jordan brand. I, I don't know if there's bad blood there or not, but I don't think it's the best look for him to leave to go to Adidas, so I don't know if they're too happy with him. But I've gotta say, personally, I think this is kind of an underwhelming collab. First off, it's on the Air Jordan 8, which isn't a lot of people's favorite Air Jordan. Second off, it looks very similar to last year's Air Jordan 8 championship pack. I mean, there's only so many gold and black and white and black Air Jordan 8s you can make. They weren't a bad group of shoes. I personally wasn't able to grab a pair because they were more limited than I expected, but I did get to see a pair in hand at the Future of Flight event back in January, and I thought they were nicely made. And the reason these are on the list is because out of the recent Air Jordan 8 releases that we've had, the materials and the overall simplicity of the color scheme is actually pretty clean. Number six, the Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo. This might surprise some of you guys, but this is by far one of my favorite sneakers of the entire year. I just recently got into running, and that's the reason I originally picked up the shoe, because I wanted a very comfortable and pretty sleek looking running sneaker. And from the moment I got these on my feet, I was absolutely blown away. The comfort of this midsole is nuts. It's unbelievable. The midsole is made up of two different foams. You've got this layer of Zoom X on the top and this layer of Nike React on the bottom. The Zoom X is super soft and cushiony and feels like a pillow underneath your foot. And then the Nike React below it, while still soft, does provide some nice bounce and is also very stable so you never feel like you're sliding around in the shoe. I wasn't planning to say this, but uh, now that I thought about it, I think that this combination of foams is more comfortable than Boost. For both running and for lifestyle, the shoe is incredibly comfortable, it's super supportive, and it gives you this really nice sort of bounce that I never really expected out of it. The upper itself is pretty comfy as well. It's not as stretchy as a knit, obviously, but it does provide some nice stability. And even though the shoe is styled like a performance runner and it's got this weird sort of point on the back, which I just feel like is very unnecessary, I think it's still a really good looking shoe. When the first colorway of the shoe dropped earlier this year, I think in that teal and in orange, that shoe actually sold out because I think it was produced in really limited numbers. And then Nike restocked that colorway a bunch of times and then dropped this black colorway and then a couple colorways afterwards. And now you can walk into your local Foot Locker and grab any colorway you want. And that is a good thing because this shoe is starting to wear out because I've worn it so much and I think I might need to grab a second pair. Number five, the Air Jordan 3 JTH Bio Beige. This sneaker was the second Justin Timberlake Tinker Hatfield collaboration on the Air Jordan 3 to drop. The first colorway was debuted at the Super Bowl halftime show by Justin Timberlake and it came in a white cement colorway. This time around we got a more woodland themed version of the shoe and it came with sort of a tan suede upper. I definitely prefer the white cement colorway of the shoe just because I think the white cement is an unbeatable sneaker, but this colorway of the shoe wasn't bad. It featured the Tinker Hatfield swoosh on the side of the Air Jordan 3 which came from Tinker Hatfield's original sketch. And overall it was a pretty simple, pretty clean Air Jordan 3. What was interesting though is that even though people seem to really like the sneaker, resale kind of flopped on it and you can still buy pairs at places like Ubik today. It really surprised me to see a shoe that people seemingly loved and that was also pretty hyped especially when it released kind of just sit around. And I think it was also pretty limited too, so I don't really know what the deal was. Number four, the white Adidas Alpha Edge 4D. 4D midsole Adidas sneakers have commanded some of the highest resale prices of any Adidas sneaker for the last couple years. And up until recently, it seemed like you could throw this 4D midsole on any sneaker and it would sell out. But the white Alpha Edge 4D seemed to prove that theory wrong because even though it's a great looking sneaker and it has a full length 4D midsole, it's still sitting some places. Now there are a couple reasons why that would be the case, the main reason most likely being the $300 price tag, but not only that, there have also been a decent amount of 40 sneakers dropping over the last couple months, and most of them have been pretty excellent collaborations. So when Adidas dropped a wider release of a more standard shoe, it didn't really move as quickly as I think anyone expected. Also from personal experience, 40 is cool because of the way that they make it and the story behind it, I think that's so cool, but I've gotta say, it's not that comfortable. I've been asked multiple times if it feels like Boost, and I can tell you 
you right now, it absolutely does not. It feels like a normal stiff midsole. Like it feels just like regular EVA foam. It's it's really nothing special. One unexpected upside that I found with the shoe, at least in the Futurecraft 4D variant, is that you can actually take out the insole of the shoe and there's just a mesh between your foot and the 4D. And that actually allows incredible airflow on the bottom of your foot, which I absolutely love. I don't know, it's kind of a weird thing and I don't know if all the 4D sneakers have this mesh on the bottom, but uh, I love it. Number three, the 2018 Nike Acronym Presto Mid. The original Nike Acronym Presto was one of the most hyped sneakers of 2016. And when it was announced that there was more versions of the sneaker releasing in 2018, people were pretty excited about it. But as someone who owned the loudest colorway and enjoyed it for a period of time, you start to realize it doesn't really go with a lot. There are so many like little details on each colorway of the sneaker that make a lot of them really busy and really tough to rock. With that being said, I don't think the idea behind the sneaker was to be some minimal clean shoe. I think it was supposed to be crazy and out there, but I think it, it went a little too far. Yes, the original acronym Presto did have a version with crazy colors, but even then, it was still a pretty simple sneaker. It didn't have crazy logos printed throughout like this year's version of the sneaker, and they kept the number of colors down to like maybe three on each version of the sneaker in 2016. Not only that, but I think they produced a crap ton of this year's version. I think there was just a bunch more pairs available this year than there was in 2016, and as we all know, availability kind of kills hype. That being said, the acronym Nike Presto Mid is an incredibly comfortable shoe, and if you remove all the crazy colors and some of the prints, it's actually a great looking sneaker underneath. I had a friend who actually picked up the gray pair and then acetoned off all the acronym logos around the sneaker and so it was a really simple gray and black shoe and it looked incredible. I still love the sneaker, I think it's a great shoe and I hope we get some more colorways in the future. Number two, the Puma Thunder Spectra. This year has been kind of crazy for Puma because they exceeded everyone's expectations and came back in force. And the Puma Thunder Spectra is an example of how great of a sneaker they could actually make. I've been obsessed with dad sneakers this year and this is by by far my favorite of all of them. For 120 bucks, you get an excellently constructed sneaker with pretty surprisingly good materials throughout. Not only that, but this eccentric colorway just pops and I love the way it looks. Even though it's got that chunky dad shoe aesthetic, it doesn't feel overly bulky, it still feels incredible on foot, and I've gotta be honest, it's very comfortable. Before this shoe came out, I wasn't even really considering or looking at Puma. <laughs> when this shoe dropped, it felt like when that nerdy girl in class who you never really look at takes off her glasses and she's a 10. It was like the exact same feeling. Okay, maybe not the exact same feeling, but you guys get the metaphor. Number one, the AKOG or a kind of guys Adidas Ultra Boost collaboration. This is my favorite Ultra Boost of all time. I, I'm just putting that out there. Like, I love this shoe. Can you imagine if this sneaker dropped two years ago, this would be a $1,000 plus sneaker. I mean, this shoe is nuts. But you know what? Honestly, I'm kind of stoked because you can grab pairs of these right now on StockX for under retail. So when this pair wears out, I'll just grab another one. I don't usually love tan sneakers. I mean, there's obviously some exceptions like the Sesame Yeezys and sneakers like that, but this is by far my favorite tan sneaker of all time. It's like this crazy mashup of like this futuristic moccasin and an Ultra Boost. So you've got this comfort, you've got this crazy aesthetic, it's just awesome. And then to kind of add a pop of crazy, you've got this tie-dyed yellow outsole, which also looks great. I mean, everything about this shoe is awesome. I think my favorite part though, and I think the most eye-catching part, is the lacing system. A kind of guys in Adidas removed the midfoot cage and instead added these little loops between the midsole and the upper, and then weaved these super long laces through the loops. I'm genuinely surprised that no other consortium collaboration on the Ultra Boost did that. I think there's maybe the Ultra Boost X that was a women's model that did that, but no men's collab, and I think that's just an awesome look. Not only that, but you've got this crazy, like, 3D herringbone pattern all around the upper of the shoe, which just gives it this nuts, sort of, like, wavy aesthetic. If you guys haven't yet, make sure to check out my review of the A Kind of Guys, or AKOG Adidas Ultra Boost. I'll put a card at the top of the screen. But that pretty much wraps up the list for today. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on this list and whether you think I missed out on any of the top underrated sneakers of 2018, so make sure to leave those comments in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a big Big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe down below if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.